Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at our multiplication tables. Um, so let's first grab the code that we think we're going to copy. So I think the multiplication practice is going to be a good first step. So we're going to grab it, we're going to copy it, and we're going to make us a new function down here. We're going to add a start header up here. So this is our... Uh, let's see, we'll say multiplication table function. And then we're going to come down here to the bottom of this function and we're going to change this to multiplication table because we're, we're wanting to use this function to practice our multiplication table or tables. So we're going to change this to tables, multiplication tables. Now, when we're practicing our multiplication tables, we don't want to go so high. We only want to go to 12. So we, in remembering the way this worked, I believe that we actually want to go to 13 if we want a range of 1 to 12. We'll try this and see what happens. I don't remember exactly, but we'll try. So what we're wanting to do is to take some number between 1 or from 1 to 13 or to 12 and multiply it times another number that's 1 to 12. So this is just randomly going to allow us to practice our multiplication tables. So all of the function here is the same. We're still going to ask the question. We're still going to look for the answer. We're still going to convert it over and look for errors. We're going to tell you if you did a good job or not. So pretty much all of that code is the same as the other uh, function. All we did was change it so that our numbers are a little bit smaller. So we're going to come down here to our main loop and we're going to add another loop down here. And I'm going to actually put this loop at the top. That way we don't have to comment anything out. So we're just going to come in here and put it here. And then we're going to say multiplication table practice. All right. So this is our functions that we're going to do and actually I noticed that I didn't uncomment that and that's the danger of commenting things out is you end up leaving something commented out that you didn't mean to all right so taking a look at this we have the code here that's going to look for 10 but on this one I actually since these are so, so easy I want to actually change this so that <clears throat> we practice 20 of these multiplication problems. So because these are just the, the tables themselves. So we have our function in here. We want to make sure that we're calling tables instead of the practice routine or the function. And then all the rest of it is going to be the same. So now within just a couple minutes, we've added yet another thing that we can practice. But I want to talk for a minute about some things that are, are a little disturbing with what we're looking at. And that is the fact that we have a, we're, our main function is getting quite long and the more practice things we add in here, the longer this is going to get. And the funny thing is, is if you look other than this time, I put 20 questions in instead of the other, but all of this stuff is all the same code. And this is a perfect time to talk about refactoring your code so refactoring is basically where you started down a development path and you started laying things out. And as you progress, you start to identify some repeating code that you want to, or I mean, it could be anything, but I want to refactor. I want to redo the code. So I'm not changing the operation of the code. <coughs> I am simply changing the way that it operate so that when the the user side of things is going to stay exactly the same but on the code side it's simpler to deal with so let's think about what we could do here to make this work a little bit better well let's say that we i'm going to come up here and let's open a line up here and we're going to say um we let's say we have a number and I'm thinking through this as we're doing it. So we may end up changing this again, but let's say that we have a, a known number of tests, which we do. So that would kind of lend us to doing a for loop. <clears throat> and let me, let me see. 
let's see, we're going to jump back over here and do a duck, duck, go <clears throat> Python for loop because I don't remember exactly what the syntax is. And again, it's perfectly okay to do this. The more you program, the, the faster you'll get it at remembering what these things are. And I, I'm actually in the mode of learning a totally different programming language too, so it's not helping me. All right, so it's 4x in range. All right, so let's think about this. So if we go back over here and we say 4, let's go back over here and say 4x in range, and we go from 1 to, in this case, we've got three different functions. So we'll say 1 to four because this is where we want to make sure that we and then we got to do our little thing here all right and so then we're going to grab all of this code and i want to tab it over because again we want it to be part of this for loop and so what we're doing right now is we're saying for one to range or from one to four do something okay so each time it operates, it's going to set correct answers back to zero. We're going to set while true, so we're going to loop forever. But then what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to change this up, and we're going to do a couple different things. But first, in this video, we're just going to do the most obvious. So we're going to say, I want to open a line. We're going to put a comment, and we're going to say, choose the function based based on x all right and so what we're going to do is we're going to say if x equals one then we're going to tell it to <coughs> execute this code all right and then if you look after this it says response response and then all of our correct answers and stuff so this is actually going to be the same thing so the only thing that's going to change is this function right here so now let's say and and actually let's do this let's say multiplication tables and then we're going to grab we're going to grab this code and just paste it and then our next one is going to be multiplication practice so we're going to change this to multiplication practice and so now we have that done, except we want to execute that on the second iteration. And let's see what I do here. Oh. Um, and so the next thing we want to do is we'll grab this again and we'll change this to three. And I'm actually going to make this multiplication practice and let's make the second thing we do our addition and subtraction. Addition or add subtract. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're to just to kind of save having to redo this if we if this doesn't work. We're going to just comment all this stuff out because we don't really what what should happen here is we should be able to delete all of that code. So look what we've done. So now instead of having a whole bunch of code and a whole bunch of different while loops that we're going through, we really only have one while loop. We've set it inside of a for loop up here. So we're saying four X in range. So we're, right now we've got three tests. So we're gonna be one, two, three. So by the time we hit four, we wanna be less than four. So we got three tests that we're doing. So each time we add a test from this point forward, we need to add one to this number right here. And then we need to add an if statement down here to tell it which test to actually go run. So as long as these functions are all returning the same thing and basically doing the same thing, then this is all the code we need. We don't need all of the other stuff. Now we're going to be practicing our multiplication tables now. So we're going to save this. We're going to jump out here and we're going to do our Python test. All right, so we've got a an error here and it says invalid syntax. So let's go back over here and it is 4x in range, 4x in range. Oh, it's a comma, not a, 
So let's jump back in here. So we got to go back up to this point and put a comma. All right, so let's try it again. Okay, so five times six. So let's put the wrong answer in. So wrong answer. And so now let's eight. All right, so now see right here, it says eight times 13. So we were wrong in our, so we're going to quit this real quick. And notice now it's actually jumping to our next application, our next function. So even though I quit the multiplication, it's asking me about the other thing. So we can fix that too. So let's um, go back in here and let's fix our function because we have the wrong thing up here. We want this to actually be 12. So I was confused. I was thinking about the for loop is the one that actually you have to put the next higher value. So now what we're going to do is let's test it one more time. So we're going to jump out here and let's do this. All right, two times two is four. And so it tells us that we've answered correctly. And then 12 times five, we'll put a wrong answer in here. All right, so it's keeping track of our questions that we've answered. And so we're going to quit, quit, quit. Now let's go back in here again. So we have a, a few little problems. The first problem is that when we go in here and quit, we're actually, we're actually looping to the next test. And so the question there becomes, do we want to do something a little bit different? And so my immediate thought is is that we could use a lowercase q to tell it to go to the next test and we could use an uppercase q to quit the entire process so what would we need to do to actually make that happen well if we come up here you can see that we actually in this except we're telling it if it's a q or if it's a capital q well we could break this out and get rid of this and do two separate things here so we could come in here and say, if it's a lowercase q, whoops. If it's a lowercase q, then say exiting practice session. And if it's an uppercase q, then we can tell it that we're exiting the application. Now, the, the thing is, is that we also need to make sure that this return to is a different thing. So now what we want to do is if, if we are exiting the application or the, the practice session, then we're going to send a two. But if we are exiting the entire application right now, we are already sending a, a one. Let's see, we're sending a one or two. So let's say that we're going to send return a three. If we're exiting the entire application. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab these lines here. Oh, we actually have a, another, another thing here. So we have an if statement that says, if it's a lowercase Q, then do this. If it's an uppercase Q, then do this. And then if it, and if it's neither one of those, then it's going to return a one. And so that's basically what we want to do. So we're going to grab that. We're going to jump up here to this function and we're going to paste that in here. And then we're going to come down here and delete what we had originally. And again, I'm going to copy, we're going to run up here to our other routine. We're going to paste that in and then we're going to come down here and delete this. All right, so that should allow us to quit the entire routine. So let's check and see if that works. So we're going to say Python test, and I'm going to hit a Q, and this time it should go to a bigger multiplication problem, and it, or add, adding and subtracting was next. So that goes into adding and subtracting. So this time I'm going to hit a capital Q, and it did not create, it did not exit out of the application like we wanted it to. So Q is still doing what it wants to do, but the capital Q did not work. So our first routine is this uh, multiplication table. So let's go to it first. Let's see, that's add, subtract. So we'll just work on this one right here and see 
what is going on. So if we break out and we see now the one thing I'm not sure about is if answer is case sensitive and is actually looking at this the way that it's supposed to be. But if answer is equal to a Q, then we should print exiting practice session and do that. Otherwise we're going to, if answer equals a capital Q, then we should say exiting application and returning a three. Oh, the problem is we didn't put our case down here. So we want to say, um, and this is actually going to be a, all right. So if K, if response is a three, then this break is going to break us out of that while loop. But I think before we do that, let's set, um, exit equal to true. And I don't know if it's a lowercase. I think it's uppercase, but we'll try this. So we're going to set exit equal to true. So this break is going to cause it to break out of this while loop. And then it's going to come up and execute the for loop. And then what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to say if uh, exit break. So this is going to cause it to break out of the entire application. So this breaks the for loop. And then these breaks break out of the while loop to tell it to go to the next session. So that should, and then what it will, and then that starts over. So that should, if the true thing works, let's see if it works. So we're going to come down here. Okay. So that did not work because now it's just exiting the application. Oh, um, so the problem now is right now we're looking for exit. So we want to set exit equal to false. And I don't know, I, I'm assuming this is the way that does it. And then let's try it again. Okay, so there's four times eight. I'm going to hit a shift Q, so capital Q, and it exits the application. I'm going to do it again, and this time I'm going to hit a lowercase Q, and it exits that root, that practice session and goes into multiplicate or adding and subtracting. Now, the next thing that I would like to do is let's take a look at what if, if we hit a lowercase Q, it's not real clear what it is that we're doing. So let's take a look at how we could, how we could do this. What, what I, what I'm thinking is that when you move on from addition to subtraction or you're going into the multiplication table, it'd be kind of handy to have it tell you and put a little bit of space, um, to tell you what it is that we're actually fixing to start doing. Um, the question is, is, well, okay. So what we can do is we can come up here to the outside of that while loop and we could just add a couple ifs here. So we'll say if X equals one, this means that we're going to be printing. So we're going to come down here, tab and we'll say print. And we're going to say, um, we'll put a couple returns so that we got a little bit of space and we're going to say, um, let's practice some multiplication tables, and then we're going to close that. All right. And then we're going to say, if X equals two, then print, and we're going to give us a little bit of space and we're going to say, let's practice some addition and subtraction. All right. And then we'll do one more for now. If X equals three, then print. Let's practice some multiplication problems. Now you're going to notice that I'm in a, and I should be more consistent when I'm doing this, but I usually try to put spaces in between what I'm doing and the parentheses just to make it a little bit easier to look at. Um, it's not required. And sometimes I get lazy and, and I'll just keep moving to get the video done. But 
Um, it, it, most of the time, you want to try to standardize the way you're coding. So if you're going to code it to put spaces in there, you really ought to, and I'll, I'll be more conscious of this going forward and make sure that I'm doing it. Um, in my code, when I'm actually writing code for real, um, I always put spaces in there just to, to kind of separate things so that I can see those parentheses better. Okay. So now if we get out of here and run this again, so now it says, let's practice the multiplication table. So two times five is 10, uh, four times two is eight, 10, eight times five. Okay. <clears throat> so now let's quit out of this session. All right, so now notice we've got a couple breaks, and then we've got let's practice some addition and subtraction. And so now it goes through and does that. And then if I quit out of that section, let's practice some multiplication problems. All right, so that is pretty much exactly what we wanted. So the next problem is that on our multiplication problems that we had earlier, we decided that we didn't want to break at 10. We wanted to actually have it run until answers was 20. Well, right now, because of the fact that we grabbed that function, that little method first, we have 20 up here, but all the other problems were supposed to be 10. And so let's fix that problem. So what, what we're doing here is we're looping for a number of questions. So why don't we create a new variable up here and we're going to say num questions equals 10. So that is our multiplication, or I'm sorry, that's going to be our multiplication tables. And then we're going to paste that here and we're going to change it to 10 multiplication or addition and subtraction problems. And then we'll change it to 10 of those. And then we're going to say if correct answer. So we're going to say if correct answer is greater than num questions or num question. All right. So what we're saying is instead of hard coding a 10 here, we're going to use a variable to hold how many questions we want to have in that particular section so that we can actually set that up here. And, and if you're having problems with your multiplication tables, you might change that to 40 so that you're, you know, practicing more of them. So that kind of breaks that up a little bit. And so we've, written our function we've got three functions we're fixing to do division but we've got to you know make sure that our code along the way is easy to look at and is not getting too complicated and you really you don't want to go too far before you start refactoring because then it just means you're going to have to refactor more stuff to get it to look right or to to get it to work the way you want it to so Always be on the lookout for repeating code that you can either add into a function or in our case, just completely get rid of and add a few if statements in there to take care of them. Now, before we leave, I want to say one more thing and I'm not going to do it in this video. I'll show you the answer in the next video, but I want you to search for Python switch. And in fact, I'll go over here with you and we'll take a look. We'll back up here and we're going to type Python switch statement. And I want you to go take a look at one of these uh, Python switch statements and see if you can figure out how to change the, all those if statements around so that they look a little bit better for working with them.